Israel is well known for its top of the line security, and if you're interested in becoming just like a skilled Israeli fighter yourself, there's a way. Joining us today is Krav Maga Grandmaster Kobe Lichtenstein and his son Yoav, a Krav Maga professor himself. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. So, to begin, tell us first a little bit about what Krav Maga is. Of course, Krav Maga, it's the self-defense technique, the system created by Emil Lichtenfeld in the 40s to allow, to give the possibility to anyone, uh, regardless of uh, gender, age, height, strength, anything, to be able to defend itself, himself, in the street. So it doesn't matter if you are attacked with a knife or with a stick or anything, you should be able to defend yourself and to go home safe. So it's hand, it's hand to hand combat essentially. It is, it is. Right. In a and kind and of it's way. great yeah. for women who want to protect themselves. Especially for, for yeah. women, for the elders, for the everyone. Everyone, the anyone yes, who exactly. wants to defend themselves. If exactly. Ever Self defense is for weapon. everyone. Exactly. So you guys are living in Brazil, in Rio. How did you guys end up bringing Krav Maga to Brazil and South America as a whole? Yes, so Master Kobe, my father, he was the, a direct student from Imi. Imi is the man who created the Krav Maga. So he was a direct student from him for the, his whole life. And in the 1990s, he brought Krav Maga, especially with the blessing, of course, of Imi, to Brazil, to South America, to teach the whole people there how to defend themselves because he saw that there they live with fear in the street. They walk and they kind of fear if they're going to be attacked or something. Sometimes we hear it and we see it on TV. So he saw that he could change their lives with Krav Maga. Well, especially in, in, in places like Brazil, Rio has a very high crime rate. So, I mean, you, you really need to be able to defend yourself in case you are attacked or robbed. Right? So that it, and yes. not only in Brazil, this is generally South America, there's a lot more poverty. So. Yes, yes, it happens all over the world actually. And sometimes we right. only see the bad things on TV. But yes, it's kind of dangerous some places and you have to be able well, to defend yourself. No, yeah, you know, it's Argentinian, you, you learn about these things, you have to protect yourself more when you walk on the street. Things are a little, I would say, safer generally in the U.S., but I can imagine this being something really important to South Americans just as a whole. Now, um, what was the reaction from, from you know, the people that you started to teach Krav Maga? How did Brazilians react to learning this new way of fighting? It was actually very good, very good. We may be surprised or not, because Krav Maga, it was the first, actually it is, the only self-defense technique recognized in the world. After Krav Maga was created by Imi, as I told you, like some other techniques started to teach also some self-defense techniques. Okay, so in Brazil it was the first self-defense technique, so people who wanted to defend yourself mm -hmm. and not be like a martial artist or a champion or win a medal, but just defend yourself right. in the street, went to look for Krav Maga. Wow, it's really interesting. Now, you have started to bring Krav Maga delegations from South America to Israel, correct? How, correct. how did you start doing that? Yes, so we started it in 1994 when Amy was still alive. So we brought them here to train with the men who created the Krav Maga. Imagine, like, it's something. You train with the men who made everything you know about it. It's like, I don't know, learning physics from Newton or something like that. So we kept coming here every two years to train with him. But in 1998, he died. And we stopped for a while. And in 2011, we came back. So in 2011, 13, and so on, every two years, we bring them here to know a little bit more about Israel, to train here, to get to know the place of birth of Israel, of, of Krav Maga. It's, you know, it's really interesting because you're not necessarily only bringing Jews, right, from South America to Israel. This is people the, from the all The majority is not Jewish. Right, so, so yeah. I mean, how do you think Krav Maga and bringing Krav Maga into the lives of non-Jews living in South America has affected their impression of Israel? A lot, a lot. Like in all of our places we teach Krav Maga, there is a flag of Israel. We talk about Israel because we have nothing to, to hide. It's the place where Amy did it. It's the place where Amy lived. It's the place where Master Kobe lived, where he learned, where he teached in the beginning. So we bring them here to get to know more about Israel, not only what we see on the TV or maybe something that it's not really correct. So they can see with their own eyes what's really Israel. 
Well, it's beautiful. I mean, you guys have really uh, brought an amazing, amazing uh, face of Israel to South America. And yeah. it looks like you're, you're headed down a very positive path. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for coming in. Thank you.